So I think it would be useful if we started by you're telling me something about your state of mind at the moment. How would you describe it? Would you say you're happy or depressed? Confident or unsure of yourselves? What words would you use to describe your mood, would you say? Take your time. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Uh, your problem seems to center on the delusion that you're a psychiatrist of some sort and that everyone you talk to is a patient. Uh, this is a rare, but then again, it's not an unheard of syndrome. Hmm. I think now it would be helpful if we talked a little bit about your mother. What are your feelings towards your mother? Extraordinary, really. Very intriguing. Now, why mother? Um, was your mother affectionate towards you as a child? Affection! Affection! Now, that is interesting. I wonder why you chose that word particularly. I think it would be helpful if you told me at this point, if you can remember, whether or not you are breastfed as an infant. Mm, uh, see, so already now we are focusing in on breasts. Good, good. Alright, uh, now do tell me now, uh, do, they, do they frighten you? Because again, this is quite common. Breasts and fear. Now that is interesting. Breasts and fear. Fascinating association, I must say. So, when you think your father fits into that association? Right, right. Absolute trust. Father. Hmm. Alright, um, let's imagine a line, shall we? Uh, we have breasts at one end, fear at the other. Where would you put your father on that line? Lines, lines. Now, now that is that is really interesting. I may ask you to draw those lines on something we call a Pentecostal test, which can be very revealing. But lines, lines. Let's let's let's, let's, let's focus those for a moment. They are very penetrative, aren't they? Very trusting, very male, very masculine. They urge onwards, don't they? Right, so now at last you see the layers are beginning to unpeel. Good, good. Right, uh, so we have breasts, we have fear, we have male, trusting, penetrative, urging, some sort of psychiatric jargon you picked up from the Reader's Digest. Uh, how often would you say you masturbated? Now look, I'm really going to be quite firm now. I am the doctor, you are the patient. Yes, that's right. No, I want to hear you say it. I want to hear you say, I am the patient. What was that? I am the patient. Good, good. Ah, oh, see, now that you can admit it, now that you can say that, that's a breakthrough. Excellent, excellent. You are the patient. I am, you are, perhaps you're all patients here. I am not a patient. Now, now, please remain calm, Mr. Windrush. Dr. Windrush. You realize I only have to pick up this phone and you will be restrained. Yes, I am. Oh, oh, don't worry, Reverend. I'm in session right session. now. It's perfect. Don't worry about it. Now look, I cannot help you unless you stop playing this ridiculous game. That's extraordinary. I don't think I've ever come across a more deeply seated illusion. It is not an illusion. Uh, your last doctor tried you on a course of lentizal, I believe. Do you think that helped at all? Alright, let's go back right to the beginning here, shall we? If you are, okay, as you think, a doctor. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Mendrush. That's the full hour. Uh, should we say same time next week? Yes, I think I'll fit to the same time next week. Perhaps when you come for the next session, do bring some photographs of your parents. Those might be useful. I think I might try you on a course of hypnosis next time. And if you'd please confirm that report with Rebecca on the way out. Thank you. Mm. Oh, I see you're both here. I guess I'll be seeing you first, Mr. Windrush. <laughs> Do you mind waiting outside for a while, Mr. Johansson? You're a little early. Rebecca, two teas, please. Extraordinary. So deep seated. Simply fascinating. Mr. Well, I'm, just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just about to say, have a seat. <laughs>